information on something that I believe is going to be of interest to a lot of people. For the last few weeks, I've been reading information online in the different forums regarding the Banana and Corvillo project, which for the most part, I believe is wrong. So I figured, like I've been doing for the past year, I'll give you guys the right information regarding what's really going on with that project. Now, I like to get my information straight from the horse's mouth, so here's my horse. All right, let's clarify this. So basically, we start using um, a female coral glow, and we raise a female coral glow and reproduce it, or actually, excuse me, they breed it, and we produce males or females in theory equally. You know, I obviously am dealing with small you know, numbers and stuff like that. So, but it, it appears that a, a coral glow female can make. Just a normal ratio of male female babies. So when you get a female, you can make males, you can make females. Absolutely. No surprise if you get a bunch of males or a bunch of females, it's normal. I, I don't believe so. Okay. So then, if you take one of those resulting males and you raise that up and you breed it, when I started breeding a male to, you know, whatever females, I started hatching like female babies. So I'm like, oh my god, I just got this terrible luck. So it's female, female, and I was kind of quietly just like, I can't believe, you know, I, I keep whiffing. I really want to make a male. You know, male was super critical. So that season, I make no male whatsoever. Okay. The following year, um, and I think it was getting to the amount where of babies I was hatching that, hey, this is maybe not such so much bad luck. It's something else. So the following year, I go right into it, making females. And then eventually, I, out of the blue, I make a random male. And what's interesting too is, you know, we got this whole sex link thing, and I'm certainly not a geneticist. Uh, I've talked to somebody who's very uh, knowledgeable and educated on genetics about this, and I basically left them with the, scratching their heads. They just couldn't understand it. They just they sat there and tried to wrap their brain around it. We fiddled around with, you know. DNA and ZW and all this different stuff and we came up with really no answers. But the theory is, when I'm hatching females from this male, in the litter are whatever non-coral glow animals and those coral glow animals happen to be the males. Yep. So my coral glows are my girls, the non-coral glows are males. And that yeah, pretty much regardless seems... Of, regardless of whatever the gene is... Doesn't, doesn't matter. It seems stuff is male. That's the way it was. From the oh, okay, so you know, then I was basically getting okay. This is this is sex linked. So I'm just like you know, kind of quietly. I, you know, I talked to you know Brock and stuff. I'm like, hey, what are you seeing and stuff like that. And Brock and I were just like, you know, maybe it's sex linked and stuff. You don't want to just blurt this stuff out because sex linked in a ball python or sex linked in a snake is like basically unheard of, and we're certainly not experienced with that. So, anyways, so then. You produce these females, and then randomly here and there, you make a male. Those are what I, I refer to those as Gen two males. So that people yeah, know, okay, so we'll call it Gen two, two males. So all of a sudden, there's a male, and you're just like in shock. It's like I got these females or or whatever, and then suddenly there's this male. And um, I think the first time I did that, which was really interesting, I can always go, well, all the other litter mates are always going to be males. And I remember going through and all of a sudden I popped one and it was a girl, but it was not a coral glow. And it was almost like, for me to make that male coral glow, there had to be a sacrificial female non-coral non glow. Okay, so I'm pretty confused here. Then I was uh, trying to you know, do coral glow to coral glow, and I, I hatched out one of these males here, and I thought, oh, that's because of the female. And it was really, really pretty. But I didn't really, you know, I didn't fully realize that this was one of those rare males. So, you know, we made a couple males. Well, ultimately now, we've taken that Gen 2 male and we've raised up that. And now we've bred that to whatever. And suddenly, we're hatching males. So, that Gen 2 male, breeding a normal female, resulting babies. I can make visual coral glows and normals. And the visual coral glows are generally males. They're not always males, but you are making males. Suddenly, all of a sudden, it's like, oh my god, it's made a male. Like, the males are like the holy grail. I mean, literally, anybody who wants to think, you know, oh, you know, you've just been saying, it, it, it's not like that at all. Much to my uh, 
chagrin and it's just it, it's not like that there's not you know all these males and stuff like that so this year you know we, we've made some males um and so, so what you're saying is the gen 2 male the male that's born from that rare once in who knows how many male that comes out of gen 2 when you breed that one again then it kind of flips it around it flipped it around makes mostly males and then you get the rare females out of those yeah. Well, what's the female going to do? We don't. We don't know. So it's really there's no. This is just this is as straight as it is. I don't understand the genes. Uh, obviously, this is a new realm for for snake genetics and stuff like that. I don't know about sex linking and stuff and, and the flipping and talking to Genesis and they were like they really start getting far fetched. Yeah, like maybe if there's like a trade off or some like maybe some like magic happens or whatever it is. I don't know. I can't answer it. But the reality is a normal. Coral glow female can make what I believe both males and females. The resulting male generally makes females. On occasion, it makes a male. That male is a superstar. That Gen 2 male is the holy grail because that male makes males and females, but it seems like it makes it more on a lopsided male, so we're almost flipping it around, which is, is crazy. So we have two different levels of males. We have F1 male or Gen 1 male from a Coral Glow female that makes girls. We have a Gen 2, which predominantly makes males, and then they can throw a little incidental opposite well, sex. Now, so the offspring of a Gen 2, which are you know males and, and females. It'd be uh, great if those males could do 50-50 then. It, it could. I don't. We don't know. Obviously, we're not. We're not that that far. So this is pretty much where we've gotten with the Coral Glow project. Um, certainly with uh, Brock and on the banana stuff. I think we're going to find a parallel and whatever. So I think we're we're dealing with the same kind of genes. Coral Glow bananas are, are synonymous. Uh, you know, maybe different origin. Maybe a little different look. I'm not even going to play any of that game. Whatever. It's uh, they're they're all wonderful to me. They're absolutely the pinnacle of all ball python mutations because, hands down, a straight up coral glow is the most remarkable snake that I've ever seen. They're just right. utterly amazing, yeah. um, and the different coral glow combos we're making are just they're really they're stellar. So. That's the information right now. Coral glows, as far as we know, as of right now. Thanks for watching, guys.